What's the biggest number you can think of? Infinity? Sure, but that's a cop-out. Infinity is a concept that mathematicians have spent centuries trying to understand. So if you're going to cite infinity as the biggest number you can think of, then you better have sorted out what a big number is first. <laughs> Mathematician Ron Graham came across a really big number in his research 30 years ago. It was a number so big that he and his colleagues needed to come up with new methods of notation to capture its enormity. How big is this number? I mean, it's really gigantic. It's not only just astronomical, it's beyond astronomical. A better question would be, what's the biggest finite number you can think of? How about one? One trillion, 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 trillion. The word trillion is thrown around in the financial world all the time and means one with 12 zeros after it. So how many trillions would you need to say to beat Graham's number? Well, if a little boy started saying trillions on his fifth birthday, trillion, 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 and kept going, trillion, trillion, and going, trillion, trillion, and going, trillion, trillion, all the way into old age, then he would have recited a number close to one, followed by 34 billion zeros. Trillion, 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 trillion. A life well spent. But does that beat Graham's number? Nah! Not even close! Worse still, there just haven't been enough seconds since the Big Bang to recite Graham's number in trillions. However, if instead of saying trillions one after another, the little boy had said a trillion to the power trillion, then he would have got a bigger number immediately. Because a trillion to the power trillion is a number itself with 12 trillion zeros. Much bigger than the number he would have spent a lifetime reciting. Continuing in this fashion, we have a trillion to the power, trillion to the power, trillion, and then we start generating towers of powers. Truly humongous numbers. Numbers virtually impossible to imagine. But, unbelievable as it sounds, the number that Ron Graham discovered is bigger still. This is because Graham's number isn't generated by towers of powers, but by towers of towers. We represent these towers with arrow notation developed by computer scientist Don Knuth. We start by building a tower of threes represented by just a few arrows between two threes. Each additional arrow builds a new tower, more complex and vastly taller than the last. We then create a feedback loop where the number of arrows between the threes equals the previous number generated. This continues 64 times until we arrive at Graham's number. But put simply, it's just a whole lot of threes multiplied together. And most surprising of all, the last digit is a seven. But what was Ron Graham looking for when he found this number in the first place? Well, a lot of what I do in, in math uh, involves looking for patterns in chaotic systems. The pattern he sought involved joining up four points with six lines, all red, or all blue in a cube of many dimensions. This pattern is repeated many times in an all blue cube, but Ron changed the colour of individual edges, trying to avoid the pattern in just one colour. His aim was to see if avoidance of the pattern in blue would force it to pop up in red. This doesn't happen in three, four, or even five dimensions. The number of dimensions required to guarantee this pattern turns out to be Graham's number. Why is this important? Well, this is one example of where complete disorder is impossible. In any large system, you've got to have a smaller set that has a lot of structure to it. For example, suppose you have 10 people all of different heights. Then it's always the case, you'll be able to find four of them that are in ascending order or four of them in the descending order. The same way if you have 17 people, you always be able to find five people that are ascending in height or five people that are descending. With 26 people, you can always find six. And this is order out of chaos. Hmm. If you're still with me, you may be thinking, why can't you just add one and make that Graham's number? What I was trying to do was to find the smallest number where this guaranteed four-point 
uh, set would happen. It just turned out that it was unbelievably huge. So Graham's number is the largest number used in a serious mathematical proof, defining the smallest number for some mathematical object. When maths gets ironic, it's truly mind-blowing.